This is the number one way real estate investors accumulate wealth, and that is through the 1031 exchange. The 1031 exchange specifically comes from section 1031 in the Internal Revenue Code, and it allows real estate investors to defer paying taxes on real estate gains. This means you can avoid the biggest expense of them all, which are taxes, and instead use that money to reinvest and make more money, creating a wealth snowball effect, all because you legally took advantage of the 1031 exchange. This is exactly what the wealthy, successful real estate investors do to create wealth, and you should be aware of it. Crystal here, CPA at Life Accounting, and by the end of this video, you will understand the number one way real estate investors build wealth through the 1031 exchange and how you can do the same. If that sounds good to you, please do me a favor and like this video and be sure to comment below and let me know what you think. Okay, now let me break down the 1031 exchange. As I mentioned before, 1031 comes from the Internal Revenue Code section 1031. The exchange is the defining part, and what it is is in reference to the exchange of properties. So basically, the IRS states that when you sell a piece of property and earn a profit from the sale, you can defer paying taxes on that profit if you use the proceeds to buy another property, otherwise known as a like-kind exchange. You are exchanging properties that are like-kind or similar. The IRS pretty much figures that since you are using the profits and proceeds from the real estate sale to acquire another similar property, you don't need to pay taxes on that until you actually stop buying investment properties altogether. Let's take an example. Let's say you invest in your first rental property. It can be a single family home, a multifamily unit, or even a commercial piece of property, as long as it's a piece of property purchased for investment business purposes, right? So you bought it for $250,000. You have tenants occupying the property, paying you monthly rent, Everything is great so far. Now some time goes by and you come across another property that seems to be a great investment. And perhaps your current property is not as profitable as you had hoped. So you decide to sell your current property with the intention of purchasing the better property you found. Well, in the appreciated real estate market that we're in right now, the current property is now worth $300,000 and sold for that amount. Under normal IRS rules, you would have to pay capital gains tax on the $50,000 gain on the sale of that property. But since you're going to use the profits and proceeds to purchase the better property you found, no tax is due. This, my friends, is called a 1031 exchange. So now you might be wondering what exactly makes a 1031 exchange really valuable to a real estate investor? This is a really good question because at first thought, it seems that your profits from a real estate sale are not going to you, but instead being tied up in another property. Well, we know one valuable benefit is you can avoid paying capital gains tax, but you can also continue to reinvest into newer and better properties which ultimately should result in more cash flow for you, assuming you are buying good investments. And if you watch my real estate depreciation video, you'll learn how you can use depreciation expense to avoid paying tax on your cash flow as well. The great part about 1031 exchanges is that you're not just limited to doing this just once. You can continue to do 1031 exchanges for multiple properties over and over again. So if you did a 1031 exchange and the property you bought didn't turn out as great as you'd like, or maybe you realized it wasn't as lucrative as you expected, you can turn around and do another 1031 exchange and avoid any taxes on the sale and use otherwise tax income towards a better investment. This is how you grow your real estate portfolio and build wealth. You can sell an underperforming property for profit and use the proceeds to buy another property. Or hey, you can even sell a property that is performing well and has appreciated tremendously in value, maybe even 40 to 50%, and use the proceeds from that sale to buy two or three more properties and earn cash flow from those assets. This is 
exactly what the rich do to grow their wealth and net worth. They buy a single family home, sell it after some time and use the profits to buy a multifamily apartment unit, a duplex and earn more cash flow from that. Then that's sold to buy an even larger asset and earn more cash flow. All of which is tax free through a 1031 exchange. Even better, when used as a long-term strategy, not only can you do a 1031 exchange over and over again to buy bigger and better properties, when you die, all of the properties and profits you earn get passed down to your children and family tax-free. It's a powerful way to create generational wealth and legacy. If you wanna build generational wealth, 1031 exchanges is a great, wise strategy to employ. Do keep in mind that if after doing a 1031 exchange on a property, you decide that you don't wanna do another 1031 exchange and decide to sell that property, then taxes would be due on the real estate gains you had leading up to the sale of that property. So you can keep deferring the taxes due with 1031 exchanges as many times as you'd like, but if you stop doing 1031 exchanges and sell your properties, then the tax would be due at that point. But this is typically not a terrible thing especially considering the amount of cash flow and wealth you would have accumulated by that point with doing 1031 exchanges. Hopefully at this point you understand the benefits of 1031 exchanges. Now I want to explain the rules and steps to take to successfully complete a 1031 exchange. An important rule when doing a 1031 exchange is you must identify the like kind property you wanna buy no more than 45 days after your property is sold. If you're in real estate already, you know that 45 days is not a long time to find a property, but those are the rules. In addition, you have 180 days or six months to actually close on the new property. So 45 days to find and commit to a new property and then six months to close. Got it? If for some reason you need more than 45 days to find a new property, you have a few options. One being just pay the capital gains tax, which a lot of people do to avoid the stress of finding a property in 45 days. Or you can put your 1031 money in a Delaware Statutory Trust or DST. A DST is a separate legal entity that is combined with other investor money for the purpose of buying bigger real estate deals. You would certainly make more money from funding and finding your own real estate deal, but DSTs is an option if you want to avoid capital gains taxes and the 45 days was not enough time for you. Okay, the next requirement is that you have to work with a qualified intermediary. This is probably the most important rule. A qualified intermediary is an individual or business that agrees to facilitate a 1031 exchange and they do so by holding the funds involved in the transaction until it can be transferred to the seller of the replacement property. They're basically a middleman. The IRS can't tax you for money that you never touched. So this is where the qualified intermediary comes into play. The qualified intermediary cannot be related to either party in the real estate transaction. The intermediary can include, but not limited to, an attorney, accountant, investment broker, or real estate broker. It is really important to have a qualified intermediary in place before the sale of the property. If you take possession of any of the funds, even for just a little time period, that can completely completely disqualify you from a 1031 exchange. Another requirement to 1031 exchanges is the replacement property has to be of equal or greater value than the selling property. Meaning you can't sell the original property for $300,000 and only acquire a $200,000 property for purposes of 1031. I mean, you can, but the difference in value is called boot and that portion is taxable. Instead, you need to make sure that the like kind or replacement property is equal to or greater than the fair market value of the original property. Okay, there are just a few more rules and requirements to remember. First, a 1031 exchange must be reported to the IRS. Yes, they are not taxable, but the IRS still wants to know about it. So you would need to report the 1031 transaction on form 8824 and include it with your tax return. If you have a business entity set up for your real estate deals, then 8824 would be included with your business tax return. Next, remember 1031 exchanges are for investment and business purposes. They are not to be used for your personal residence. So if you buy a piece of property and then decide to live in it, you cannot do a 1031 exchange 
on that property. All right, I know 1031 exchanges can be very complex transactions. So let me recap the steps for you. Step one is to identify the property you want to sell. Step two is to hire a qualified intermediary to facilitate the transaction. Step three, once the original property is sold, you have 45 days to find a replacement property. Let your qualified intermediary know what property you want to buy. Step four, provide your qualified intermediary with a purchase contract of the new property. By the way, your qualified intermediary will walk you through a lot of these steps. Step five, close on the replacement property within 180 days of the sale of the original property. Step six, file IRS form 8824 reporting the 1031 exchange. Do this for the tax year in which the original property was sold. Not so bad, right? All right, now I want you to know about reverse 1031 exchanges. In these cases, you identify and buy the replacement property before the original property is sold. This is totally possible and not entirely uncommon. The timeline works the exact same as a normal 1031 exchange, but in reverse. You would have 45 days from the purchase of the replacement property to identify which property you want to sell and have 180 days from the purchase date to complete the sale of the original property. Again, this is known as a reverse 1031 exchange. Okay, great. So lastly, I want you to know about the costs of a 1031 exchange. In addition to the normal cost associated with buying and selling real estate, like agent commissions and other closing costs, you'll have to pay for a qualified intermediary. You can expect to reasonably pay anywhere between $800 to $1,200 for a qualified intermediary. Not bad. Qualified intermediaries make most of their money from the interest income they earn on holding your 1031 funds. Now an optional but highly recommended cost is to hire a CPA or a tax attorney. As mentioned before, 1031 exchanges are very complex and impact the way you report your taxes. And a qualified intermediary is not technically qualified to give you tax advice. So consider the cost to hire a competent CPA or attorney that specializes in 1031 exchanges. All right, you made it to the end of this video. I hope you now have a better understanding of 1031 exchanges. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'd love to hear what you think. Also, please consider subscribing to our channel so you don't miss out on future tax videos. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.